Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Jeremy Scott Fitness Podcast or Radio Show. Coming to you on this Saturday, May the 30th, 2020. Hopefully this finds you enjoying your weekend. And if you're in an area where the world is opening up, you can get out and do some shit you love with people you enjoy. Today's podcast, we are going to be talking about the best ways to beat cellulite. As I get that question at least five, ten times a week uh, on the internet and in person doing this for the last, you know, 15-ish years, give or take. Uh, I don't think a week goes by where I don't get the question about cellulite and how to eradicate it. So we'll dive deep into that today. And uh, this podcast is going to be brought to you by my homies at Athletic Greens. Again, Athletic Greens, you guys, is the go-to supplement I take every single day. Uh, 365, I, I never miss it. It's the only greens that I actually don't mind uh, the, the flavor of. And uh, in terms of micronutrients, you know, it, it covers all the bases, uh, you know, from A to Z. You'd probably have to eat the equivalent to 10, 12 servings of, of fruits and veggies a day. And if you did that, you'd probably be farting up uh, a disgusting storm of gas and your wife or your husband would probably leave you or your kids would think something's wrong with you because you're literally just a toot machine. So uh, I can't eat, you know, six, seven servings of greens a day. I don't have the time or I won't make the time. And uh, so I take athletic greens every single day on top of the greens I eat uh, to cover the gaps in all of my nutrition. If you guys are interested in 20 free travel packs, hit me up, I'll send you the link. You can try them out for yourself. In fact, I think right now, uh, we have 10 packs in the office. So if you're really on the fence and you're unsure and you don't want to, you know, check them out right away, I can send the next 10 people who message me a free travel pack. We'll shoot it to you in the mail. You can rip it open, try it, drink it in water, and then we'll give you the discount code on top of that. How does that sound you guys? So the first 10 people who hear this, hit me up. I'm happy to send it to you. If you're watching me on YouTube, this is the box. Uh, and in fact, like you get these little individual packets these are the ones I travel with everywhere I go. Even when we go out of the country, they come with me again. Like I said, I never miss it. And if you take these, I think for you guys, it's it avoids you taking a multivitamin. Uh, it'll cover the base of a probiotic. Again, it's, it's the easiest thing you can take and, and you won't forget it. You don't have to take 19 different pills. Just rip it, put it in water. And again, if you're interested, 20 free travel packs, I'll send it to you guys from my homies over at Athletic Green. So with that said, we're going to be talking about cellulite here today. And uh, again, cellulite, it's, it's part of life. It, it really is. Um, this is off topic a little bit, but uh, I've seen it in all walks of life. Men, women, uh, fit women in all reality. Like I've seen, again, I've been around uh, every level of fitness here uh, from some of the fittest women on the planet uh, from the Julie Fouchés, the, the Colleen Foshs of the world, to, you know, your 70-year-old, you know, grandma who comes in here. Like, I literally have, have trained with the best and been around them and seen them. And uh, I'm here to tell you, like, even women who have, like, abs can still have cellulite on their bodies. That's reality. I know that's kind of odd for people to hear, but it's the truth. So just hear me out. Uh, you know, and dudes who have abs, probably not so much, just because genetically we are, you know... I don't have the percentage from you, probably like 10% leaner on average. So like a dude that's at 10 and a woman that's at 20, that's I guess around probably the equivalent. Somebody can message me and correct me if I'm slightly off there, but I believe that's about where it is. So just by being a dude and having testosterone in your body, you're gonna be leaner on average. But I have seen women who have abs, who are crazy lean, who still have some cellulite on their bodies. So you can't be so hard on yourselves, ladies. I just, I need to throw that out there before I say anything else because you guys are so overly critical. I've said this before, I love my guys out there, but dudes tend to think of themselves as like they were once a, a living legend uh, or they still think that of themselves, right? So they're, they're the Al Bundy. You know, they once threw four touchdowns in a high school football game and they kind of always relive that moment and think of themselves as the 18 year old version who probably had abs and who, who was athletic and now they're 45 pounds heavier and they look nothing like that person and dudes a lot of times still uh, romanticize and believe they're that individual, you know? It's like, it'd be like me for sports, right? Like like playing sports, I'm still fit, I'm still athletic, but I can't do all the same stuff. Like I can still dunk a basketball, but I can't do all the same dunks I could used to do. It's not even close. Like I can still take the same shots and like, you know, we can step back, pivot, move, 
but the percentage goes down drastically. And I know that, like, I know I'm a shell of my former self in that life. And dudes oftentimes have a hard time grasping that where women, on the other hand, might, you know, be amazing. Like they're in great shape. They're, they're like literally a smoke show and that they think of themselves worse. Women tend to be overly critical, at least what I've seen here. Uh, even my wife, you know, you guys have seen her. She's beautiful. Uh, she's a fucking unicorn, but she'll be so critical of herself, of, of how she looks. And it, it's, and I've seen it in her and I've seen it with hundreds of women here over the past decade. So ladies, stop doing that. Most of you are beautiful. You're amazing. And again, if, you, if there's things you, you don't like on your body just yet, you can work to change those. And just know, like, even if you think that we notice, we, we're dudes. We're, we're, it's so minimal what we even care about as men, uh, first of all. Uh, you know, we don't care about, at least for me, I don't care about your hair. I don't care about your lashes. I never looked at your toenails. I don't give a shit. Uh, we, we have a focus. Uh, some of us are different. Uh, boobs, butt, face. Like we, we're we're just we're we're animals. We're dudes. We're predators, and, and uh, we don't we're not so concerned with the little minute things uh, and the imperfections that you see on yourself because we don't see them. Uh, I use the example like my wife will you know when the world is running right she'll go get a haircut and it's like a million dollars and she's like oh do you like my haircut and I'm like I can't I don't even I don't even know the difference I, I didn't I, I see the I see the charges on the card or I see the cash that you know went away but I don't notice the hair because that's not what I'm focused on. Like, and we don't notice these you know, little trouble spots that you may have, but I understand, uh, you know, it, it is a concern of yours and it, it, perception is reality. And if it's like, if that's what you're focusing on uh, and it's bothering you, I'm gonna kind of walk through, you know, hopefully some ways we can eradicate that. And it's all stuff you guys know, but I'll go deep into it here. And so, Obviously, you know, there, there's the unflattering names given to, you know, undesirable skin conditions and, and cellulite would be, you know, the popular term that plagues, you know, I guess for most people, the backsides and the stomachs of, you know, women around the world. And sure, men can be affected by it, but for the most part, it's, it's for females, right? And uh, it's kind of a... a a fear, you know, of women as uh, they get older or as they're not in their tip-top shape. I guess especially when you like wear a bikini uh, in the summer and like the the, the dimply appearance, right, uh, on your butt and your thighs and your midsection. And, and women, you know, don't have to be considered, you know, uh, I guess softer or, or chubbier or, or fat to have cellulite in the most awkward places, like I mentioned before. I know women who are super fit, you know, top, you know, one percenters who just genetically have cellulite in certain areas. Even if their abs tend to be lean, they have some cellulite showing in other spaces. And there's a lot of factors that go into that. But here's the, the crazy thing. Even when you look at like the fake world, right? I, I call it all, you know, we're all like fake famous, right? Like we're all the same person. Like whether you, you know, everybody started out the same as just like, just a, a normal kid who went to school with awkward clothes and a terrible haircut and weird uh, messed up teeth and braces and whatever. That's how we all started. Then we morphed into something else. That's why I say it, it's fake famous because I, I've been saying all the same stuff, you know, since I had two people who knew me and now if we can speak to a million people, I'm still saying the same shit. There's no difference. So all that notoriety and all those things like you acquired over time, but it, it's fake. And so in the fake world, which I consider like movie stars and, and athletes and this different you know, echelon of, uh, of living, even those perfectly like thin, you know, actresses that kind of fit the, the stereotype mold of, of what Hollywood or what like a movie stars or what like celebrity kind of looks like, they have cellulite uh, and they work incredibly hard to hide it from you guys. We're all real people. And it's the ones who actually share it and show it that I actually appreciate more because they're not trying to, you know, bullshit you they're not trying to scam you and for most of those people if you don't see a lot of it like they have a, a private trainer they have a private chef like that is part of their job like so there's other factors that go into it but even with that said most of them have it they're just they're better at hiding it and, and dressing it a certain way and moving a certain way where you don't see it but you know i guess the question is why is it that women are are you know mostly stricken uh with this and how do you prevent it or at least like minimize the appearance of it. I guess we'll talk super quick, like what is cellulite? I mean, cellulite consists of uh, several, you know, alterations in your skin, uh, the normal structure coupled with, you know, 
circulation issues and how you know the blood circulates in the body. And the fatty areas of cellulite tend to have a you know lower blood flow, um, or even in certain instances can be kind of you know cold to the touch, and it changes you know the fat cells themselves that are there. And if you have cellulite, you know there isn't you know uh, a ton you can do to you know abolish it, but you can certainly r reduce its appearance. Now, it, it's on a graded scale. If you got 100 pounds to lose, obviously that's different. Uh, if it's you're relatively lean and you have it there, it's going to be harder, obviously. It's like anything. Like, the fitter you get, the tougher it is to get fit. Now, obviously, the rich get richer, but, you know, as you get into a certain level of shape, it becomes even harder and harder to change, you know, your physical body. And I mean, shit, even, even babies have cellulite, right? Like, when you see them, like, they're just little little chunky fat balls are amazing, but uh, they definitely do have cellulite on for sure. And so, you know, it's when you look at, you know, like a little kid, right? Like a little, like five, six, seven month old uh, that kind of has like this, uh, you know, Pillsbury Doughboy-ish kind of like cottage cheese, the uh, squishy appearance. So that's pretty basic, right? You know, and, and you realize like, obviously it's the structure of us and, and females, I would say like in general, like by virtue, of your hormonal environment and the body structure, um, you're kind of stricken with cellulite like from the very beginning, just based on being you. And that's probably not ideal to hear, and it's kind of just the difference between men and women. Like obviously we are not uh, the same in terms of our, our hormones, and my wife will be the, the first one to uh, to remind me, uh, you, know, you, you just have no idea what it's like. I'm like, well, no, I don't, because I'm a dude and I have a penis and it's uh, different. We have different organs and body parts and different hormones, so no, I, I can't. But in the same regard, like, it'd be hard for her to feel what I feel and have testosterone coursing through my body and like, you know, being a, it's like a female, like obviously I'm not a, a 56 year old woman, never went through menopause, I don't know what it's like. Uh, I've never had a period, I don't know what like, you know, you know the PMS is like. Uh, I have no idea whatsoever, but also like, you know, I could explain to my wife the difference in hormones like, well, you were never a 16 year old boy and walked around with the boner every 10 minutes. Like you just don't know what it is. And so I have empathy for that and it, it, it's, it's tough to see, but when you think of it like, like normal, uh, healthy fatty tissue development, and we're talking like the growth of, of new, uh, fat cells, not fat cell size here that begins like in the womb and it continues until the child is like say 18 months old and then it picks up again during puberty in today's society with all the, the things that we do now that we didn't probably do 100 years ago and what i mean is the junk food uh the excessive calories some children are in this constant state of fat cell growth and potentially new fat cells right and i've talked about this before like if genetically you have so many and we're talking probably a billions here, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but if, if you have a, a hundred fat cells and then over time, the way that you eat junk food, the way that you have excess calories and then the way that you're living your life over the course of five, 10, 15, 20 years, you're creating more or potentially more fat cells in the body and those don't go away. Now you can shrink them down based on how you eat, but they're always going to be there. Like they can be kind of, I guess, dormant, if you will, if they don't have enough you know, fuel to, be full but obviously you're creating new ones and so the fatty tissue near the skin consists of two layers separated by you know that facial light fat like that the layer right and so the more external the layer is uh you know which is formed by this globular like those large fat cells they're arranged vertically here and the blood vessels feeding those fat cells uh are numerous and they're fragile. And the deeper layer um, of the fat cells, uh, those are kind of smaller and they're arranged horizontally. So imagine kind of like, a, how do I describe this verbally? Like a, like a lattice pie, right? Like, like I guess, is it a lattice, as you call that? Uh, I'm really testing the depths of my knowledge here. But like, as your finger, like kind of that cross stretching, right? Like how you would make a really fancy apple pie. I guess that's kind of how I think about it uh, in my brain. and. Uh, so those blood vessels are gonna be larger. And so if you're following me here, the second layer uh, increases in thickness when a person gains weight, mainly due to the increase in the fat cell volume, which presses against the outer layer, 
making it more pronounced. You, you get what I'm going here? So you have like these, if you're watching me on YouTube, like just my fingers, like you have these fat cells like interlaced. And again, it's that second layer where it increases in the thickness when a person gains weight. And that's typically due to the increase in the fat cell volume. And that's pressing out, making it more pronounced. And so in women, that outer layer is thicker uh, and the skin covering it is usually thinner, which is the case from birth. And that explains, you know, uh, why you would have like, you know, the dimples like in your kid's butt cheeks when they're like a little baby, right? Like these little, little cottage cheese, little fat deposits, right? And so as a woman ages and gains more body fat, you know, from an increase in that inner layer, it makes the fat cells uh, in that outer layer more visible. So hopefully uh, you can follow me so far. I know it's kind of trying to make it, the science of it as simplistic as possible. Uh, and, and so it's a genetic thing or like it's like a hormonal thing, I guess, if you will, in terms of genetics. So like, that's why I say, you know, the female hormones uh, obviously are different than men. I've talked about this many times before. It's like, because as men, we have this testosterone uh, coursing through our veins. And when you look at dudes who typically have less testosterone, it's harder for them to be leaner because it's harder for them to build muscle. And as we've talked about before on the podcast, like your muscle is your metabolism. So the more lean tissue you can have in your body, the leaner you're gonna be. And hence the why, uh, and I'm gonna generalize here, most men are more muscular than women. And not to say that there isn't women who are super jacked, like Colleen Fosh has been on the podcast a lot. I actually made to make a note and get Colleen back on the podcast. But she's like super jacked, like more than most dudes we know. But again, when you see her, she doesn't look like the same. Like when you line her up in a room of fit girls, she looks different. Like she's a, she's a freak show. Like, and I mean that in the, in the most loving way possible because I love her to death, but she's a unicorn. She's a beast, man. Like when you see her, like, holy shit, she kicked my ass. Like that is not the norm. So on average, like dudes are going to have more lean tissue on their bodies. Hence they're going to be leaner generalizing on average than most women. And obviously when a dude hits puberty and a woman hits puberty, they're, it's not the same. Like dudes, uh, we get the acne increases like crazy for sure. Uh, we, we grow in size, uh, our voice changes, we become way more aggressive, uh, we get a boner every 10 minutes, uh, you know, it's just different. And when a woman starts to hit puberty, uh, they battle with that, you know, for a lot of people, kind of that leg cellulite, if you will, or, or thigh cellulite, uh, or like the, the femoral region of a woman, and that's like uh, the back of the upper thighs, you know, those kind of areas, uh, they're very responsive to this very unique kind of hormonal profile, if you will. And then the estrogen obviously increases the response of like that leg fat or, or thigh fat, or the thigh fat cells. And, uh, you know, it kind of messes with uh, your alpha receptors, I guess, if we're gonna get you know, specific here. And that's like preventing, you know, uh, the fat breakdown and preventing the fat loss. And that, and it can stimulate an enzyme, I believe it's uh, the LPL, which is like the lipoprotein uh, lipase, I believe. Uh, my scientific terms are probably off here a little bit, but I'm sure I'm pronouncing it pretty close. And that stimulates, you know, fat growth. And so this can occur in, in the glute region, uh, basically your butt uh, and your abdomen as well. And then it usually localizes in the back of the legs. And so when you look at, and again, this is, this is the hormonal shitstorm that happens. And that's why, you know, the fat is where it is. It's not, it's a, it's a reality of life, it just is. So when you look at how the estrogen kind of increases and you start to look at, okay, well, here's what's happening. We're getting it in the glutes, we're getting it in the legs, and we're getting it in the abdomen. Typically the hardest areas for most women on average to uh, lose fat and obviously to get rid of like that crazy cellulite. And then when you look at like your breastfeeding hormones, if the you know, women who have been pregnant who have children, that's another hormone that makes cellulite more visible because it increases water retention in the fatty tissue, which makes each cell look larger and more lumpy, if you will. So most women are gonna probably have some issues with cellulite just because they are women. And, and the hormones that make you guys so badass and awesome, um, the same reasons that you're more susceptible to cellulite. So the reason that you're, you're, you're probably kinder and, and gentler and that you're A, females, and you can have uh, kids so it puts you on this gangster level like we don't have like we don't have I, hey I have the, the reproduction system to do that um, we don't have the hormones to do that you guys that's why you are the life you guys are life like you create 
fucking humans. You guys are all different. We can't do that. We're just dudes. Um, and we're too soft. And we, I, there's no way I could have a kid. I don't even like taking a big shit, let alone imagine pushing out a kid. And I've said it to, to every woman who's ever been in here, it seems like the most traumatic thing ever. Like, it, like and I mean that like to my physical body. Like, I would rather get kicked in the nuts as hard as you can than have to like push out uh, a human being. So for those reasons alone of, of the hormones uh, and just how you guys are, you know, biologically and genetically, you're, you're going to have the, the cellulite issues. And uh, inside of that, depending on your parents, you know, how, how lean they were, how big they were, how you've eaten your whole life, all of those things are going to play a role. And then just obviously you being you. So also, if we talk on this really quick, insulin uh, can make the cellulite more visible from my understanding. So one of the greatest influences on, you know, cellulite appearance is uh, kind of the, the blood glucose regulating hormone, insulin. And whenever you eat, let's say carbohydrates, your body releases insulin to manage this influx of glucose from carbohydrates, obviously into the bloodstream. And in the ideal, like the perfect world, right? Your muscle cells recognize this insulin and they invite the glucose into the muscle cells to be used for energy or stored later as glycogen. So in the case of most people who are not active, uh, not fitness people, uh, sedentary people, people who don't make health and fitness and movement the priority, most of them, uh, the insulin is going to send the carbs to the fat cells to be turned into fatty acids and stored as triglycerides. This makes the fat cells in that, um, I guess, a lamer layer, like in that, bigger. That makes the fat cells bigger, causing the fat cells to be squished out to be more visible, like we talked about before. Uh, as we gain weight, it's pushing from one to the other in a kind of like fancy you know, pie level, horizontal and vertical together. And uh, that's what's happening. And that's, uh, it's not ideal. So that's why we say, and again, I'm not vilifying carbohydrates, but I'm vilifying overeating. And for most people, carbohydrates are the most easily overeaten of all the macronutrients. So unless a person is consistent with exercise and uh, really crushing it and uh, on a legit training program and working out incredibly hard, you know, most days, uh, the higher carbohydrate diets that are putting you in a calorie surplus are going to cause your body to produce more fat. I'll repeat that again because it's very important for you to hear. Unless you are a person who is in a consistent fitness and exercise regimen and routine, and you're a person who consistently works out hard most days of the week, I'm not saying you have to go to a Metcon every single day, but you, you got to be active every day. Uh, I can't stress this enough. If you want to be in good shape and not have cellulite on your body and you want to look and move and feel a certain way, you need to move your ass every single day. Uh, again, it doesn't got to be a 45 minute like deadlifting murder session. It can be, I do three legit Metcons per week. I come in and I crush it for 26 minutes, 32 minutes. And then the other days I maybe do yoga, I maybe go for a hike, I walk my bike. I walk my bike, I go for a walk, I ride my bike, just any kind of activity whatsoever, just to get a little bit of a sweat going and move your body through space. It's a gift that you can. There are millions of people out there who are stuck in fucking wheelchairs and are laying in hospital beds who would trade places with you in a second. Don't waste the gift of it. Side note, I'm sorry to get off my soapbox there. The point I'm sharing with you is, if you are not consistently moving your body every single day and training hard at least a couple times a week, and you're eating a higher carbohydrate diet that is putting you in a calorie surplus, your body is probably going to be producing more fat, meaning you are going to get bigger and softer and have more cellulite in your body. That's most likely what will happen. Understanding that insulin also stops your body from using fat as fuel and it can cause your body to store more water, pushing cellulite out for the world to see on you. So changing your lifestyle is the easiest way to smooth out the cellulite that is visible. And I'm not saying it can completely disappear. Uh, I don't know everybody, obviously each of us, you know, genetically is uniquely different. But the takeaway is if you can be physically active and eat a well-balanced diet of protein, produce, and water, proteins, green vegetables, maybe throw in a couple fruits as they fit and some quality grains, 
but not eating a bunch of processed nonsense and drinking a shit ton of booze, you're going to be all right. And I know that's, Jeremy, that's what you always say. I'm like, that's all there is. Uh, if I knew something better, I would tell you something better, but that is the reality. And so of all the things under your control uh, with respect to cellulite and, and body fat, I guess in general, there are two major things that we can change to minimize the appearance of it. So with cellulite, you either have to, uh, you know, or you don't have to if, if you're super lucky and I guess you didn't get any in your genetic freak show, but uh, I, th I don't even think that lasts so long. Um, you know, some of your friends might get a lot of it. Some of your friends probably don't have a lot of it. And then as we age, it creeps up on us all. And you'll hear the phrase like, well, why I, I've never had this much cellulite before. And I'm like, well, you've never been 44 years old before. It's kind of part of it. Like, well, I've never had this much body fat before. I'm like, well, you've never been 37 before. Like comparing ourselves to 22, 24, and 28 when you're 51 or you're 39 is, it's not an even comparison. It'd be like me going and shooting hoops here and be like, man, I've never been this terrible before. I'm like, well, you've never not practiced this much. You've never been this old before. You've never been out of rhythm this much. Like, it's all part of it. Even for me, if you want to take something that's just pure genetics, like when I'm 22 and I'm going to go do like walking lunges, I wouldn't even have to think of doing mobility. No, I would throw some in with what I knew, not nearly as much as I do now, but I'm like, why do I got to do you know, all this mobility stuff, I'm just gonna go in and rip it. And I'm like, there was never an issue. And now it's like sometimes in the morning, I have our early groups here at 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. and I'll show a forward lunge, I'll take a step and I don't do it verbally out loud, but like, oh shit, I kind of feel a little, little pain in my patella there, what is that? And I'm like, oh, that's right, your VMO is super tight, dude. Your quads are tight, your hamstrings are tight, your IT band is, you know, not tracking right away. Whatever it may be, I'm like, once I start to do some mobility and foam roll and then I take something, oh shit, there's no pain there. The point of me sharing that is we've never been this age before. We're, you know, we're the oldest we've ever been right now living through it. And so comparing to what it used to be isn't always realistic because we're always changing. We're always evolving, especially when it comes to our physical body and our hormones. So the first thing you guys can do is one is, uh, like I said before, just get off your butt, you know, consistently uh, exercise. Physical activity is always going to be the key to everything. I believe it, it, it fixes a lot of problems. For a lot of you, it's, it's, it's your natural drugs. It's your natural fix. It, it's going to help a lot of things move better in your life. It's going to allow you to eat a little bit different, drink a little bit different. It's going to get you quality sleep. It's going to decrease um, your body's insulin levels naturally and makes your muscle cells more receptive to uh, burning up carbohydrates and fat for energy. So yes, we always say, you know, things about, you know, the six, you know, six pack abs are made in the kitchen and partially true. Uh, obviously, you know, we all have abs, you know, anatomically, like they're all there. We all have, you know, rectus, you know, the front six or four or eight or your ligaments are split. However, your genetics are, you know, predisposed to you from your mom and your dad and but we all have those things and obviously it becomes a body fat issue, but consistent physical activity is probably the best medicine you can have. I think food would be maybe one, but physical activity is gonna be a close second because if you just are eating right, but you're not strength training, you're not doing any aerobic work, obviously those systems become out of whack. Like your heart is not going to be as strong. Your lung capacity is not gonna be as great. Your bone density is gonna probably go to shit. You're not going to have the muscle tissue because you're not creating the resistance on the body that it needs in order to keep, you know, a, a strong glutes and hamstrings and all of those things and have, you know, a tight core because they're not using the muscles. So hear me when I say this, the first thing you can do is just get off your ass and consistently move every single day to decrease your body's insulin levels naturally and make the muscle cells be more receptive to burning carbs and fats for energy by putting a demand on the system, i.e. exercising your body. Daily exercise can increase muscle mass which as we know, your muscle is your metabolism, which helps you decrease body fat. That's the key. Don't be afraid to pick up some weights. Don't be afraid to push a sled. Don't be afraid to push the pace on the assault bike. Don't be afraid to do some high volume leg stuff. All of those things can increase muscle mass, which can help you guys decrease body fat, which IE will help there be less cellulite for you. It can increase circulation in your lower extremities, providing more blood to 
like the fat cells in the areas where cellulite is more likely to be, enabling them to be used for an energy source. So when it sends more blood to those fat cells, that's gonna be the key, you guys. And finally, it can improve um, the rigidity, I guess, if you will, of your tendons and your muscles, making the fatter areas seem smaller and less pronounced. So if we're talking a visual, hopefully that can help. And you gotta think, like, all of the sitting, you know, uh, behind your desk or on your couch day in and day out doesn't do much for improving blood flow to the areas um, like if it is you know your hamstrings or your quads or your thighs if you will and your butt uh, sitting on your ass you know for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours a day doesn't really do anything to make it look smaller or make it stronger you follow me here so again you got to get up and you got to move as much as you can every single day some of you guys may be even using a stand-up desk once in a while um, so you can give your ass a break, literally. Uh, you know, when you sit for those periods of time, you know, A, it's not great for your spine and for your posture and your butt basically becomes your feet and it causes a lot of issues uh, up and down your posture, your chain. And uh, there, there's an, I could go into a whole different podcast on that, but I think just movement is the key. And honestly, if you want to me, I don't know what to do. Follow us on Instagram. We, I post shit all day long. Listen to the podcast. Uh, our YouTube channel, which if you guys don't subscribe, subscribe to it. Uh, there's like 12, like 1,200 videos on there, uh, literally right now, from full exercise libraries to everything. And if nothing else, just walk. Go for a walk every single day for 30 minutes. If you don't know what else to do, open up your podcast app, listen to me ramble on about this nonsense, and go for a walk. Or put on your favorite music, or whatever your thing is but just move your body. I cannot say that enough, it is a gift, you have to do it. Next thing on the list. I would tell you to eliminate, or I don't say eliminate, it's probably the wrong word. Um, limit all of the simple uh, processed shit carbohydrates from your diet. I, I want you guys to still be able to eat, you know, cookies uh, and cinnamon rolls and uh, chips and, and all the things that make life amazing but you really gotta pick your spots. Uh, you really have to you know, track your macros and make sure they fit into your day. You just can't get into mindless eating. And uh, we've talked about emotional eating on here before too and the behavior patterns of that. There's a full podcast on it if you guys have not heard it. But you can't let it overtake you and consume you and you can't get into these rabbit holes of, of shitty eating and behaviors because what happens is you can easily wander into that life. I've seen it with drugs before, uh, and alcohol and debt, and I've seen it with uh, weight gain. It's so simple. I've seen people, you know, slowly wander into debt, and all of a sudden they're like, "Holy shit, I got twenty-two thousand dollars of credit card debt." How did it happen? I'm like, "Well, you probably didn't buy something for twenty-two grand, but up front, you probably you probably bought something for sixty-two bucks and one hundred and eight bucks, and then one thing went wrong with your car, and another three hundred bucks, and so on and so on and so on, and you got behind with the payments. Now you're in debt." I watch with alcohol. Most people don't start off being a raging alcoholic. The first time you drank booze, you didn't crush a whole bottle of wild turkey. You probably sipped the beer of your dad's or you had a shot of vodka at your friend's house and then you filled the bottle back up with water and didn't think you'd get caught and then it separated and you got your ass beat. Uh, speaking from personal experience there, uh, man, we did so much dumb shit like that. It's just, it's utterly ridiculous. And we thought, like when you're, when you're young, you're so stupid and you think, this is off topic, but you think you're so smart and uh, you're a young kid and you think like you, then you, I'm talking like I'm probably like 13 or something at the time and we did that we, we crushed this whole bottle of vodka and I remember the first time I was just like fucked up I was probably got I mean I would drink beers before that but the first time like I really had hard alcohol I uh God, it was just, we're just trash it was me uh, my best friend Connor uh, our homie Jesse Croning we're at Jesse's house his parents were gone and we're just we're, we're just blasting Nas uh, it was written, and he had these, uh, what do you have, the solo barracks, these kicker subwoofers in his room. It was so loud, and uh, we're just out there just vibing, just just hammered. And I remember we filled the bottle back up with water, and his parents caught it, and uh, it was not, uh, not a good scenario. But my point being is uh, that wasn't the first time I ever tried alcohol. You know, the first time like, I sipped the beer, and I'm like, oh, this is the grossest thing ever. Like, And then you wander into that, and obviously like I've had my own issues with drugs and alcohol, and, and you can identify the patterns but it doesn't happen overnight you find yourself 
kind of wandering into these things. And so that's why I say with your food, you really be diligent because it's, an, it's easy to, to start having really shitty eating habits. And, and it only takes a, a couple of, of wrong moves, like grabbing trail mix here. You know, oh, I'm only have trail mix these days. And there's nothing wrong with trail mix inherently, other than it's ridiculously calorie dense and tastes amazing. And it's like, you know, it's the food version of cocaine, basically, if you get the good shit. And uh, you keep eating it and eating it, and all of a sudden you're eating, you know, a, a cup, and then it's like a half a pound, then it's like a pound, then you're only you're doing it once a week, then twice a week, and, and all of a sudden it just becomes a staple in what you're doing. So the point of me rambling on off topic, because I'm going crazy here, is uh, you, you have to be really diligent. So tracking your food is going to be helpful, planning your cheats and treats, but really just limiting the simple carbohydrates, limiting alcohol, and limiting the, the manufactured fats from your diet, I think is gonna be the best way for you guys to limit cellulite on your body and limit you know, the amount of fat gain uh, that's gonna happen. And you know, like carbs are you know, the major promoter, obviously, of, of insulin, but not all carbs are bad, right? And, and timing is important for, for some of you guys, especially if you wanna be really diligent about it. So the higher you know, fiber carbs and the non-starchy vegetables, like let's say greens and, and your colorful veggies, uh, those produce the least amount of insulin. And some of the, the starchy veggies, like let's say your sweet potatoes and your squash and your peas, while they're great, uh, and I think they're all part of a well-balanced diet, I'm not vilifying carbohydrates because there's nothing wrong with them, the most easily you know, available energy source of the body, those produce obviously a little bit more insulin than like let's say your spinach or your Brussels sprouts or your asparagus. And you know, the, the higher fiber you know, content uh, is important, and I do believe fiber is important for you guys uh, to be healthy. And, uh, the fiber helps keep your body regular. Um, so again, you're not constipated and you're not going crazy. So you can you know, literally squeeze out a few good ones. Uh, if it's once a day, twice a day, whatever your normal uh, you know, schedule and routine is. But uh, along with fiber and uh, adequate water intake, uh, it'll keep you guys regular. And it can also improve you know, blood flow to the body, the lower limbs and everything else. And I believe you know, the simple carbohydrates, uh, it could be used for your body probably after exercise, like I always say, like, you know, that, that post-workout window is probably the most ideal when your body can actually uptake the nutrients and use them to, to really crush it. And sometimes before, if, if you need, you know, I obviously uh, train fasted and then I train off no food and, and that works for me. But for some of you guys, you might need uh, carbohydrates, whether it be simple pre-workout, depending on what type of workout you're getting into uh, and what you're going to do. And again, obviously at this time, you know, your muscles are primed that way to use insulin uh, for repair. Uh, and for regrowth instead of just for fat storage. That's why I say for you guys, if you're talking carbohydrate timing, for a lot of you, the simple carbs are, are probably best used post-workout. And again, if you do need it before, it's fine, but that's probably the best time that your muscles are kind of primed to just like soak them up like a sponge and use that insulin for repair and for growth or for gains for you guys out there who are crazy. And uh, it'll be used for that instead of just fat storage. So hopefully you're following me here as I say that. And so. If we go to the next kind of tier here, the, uh, the, the high sodium, the processed foods like your uh, microwave lunches, uh, the, the ones that have to be packed with, with a shit ton of sodium uh, to prevent spoilage. Uh, again, there's nothing inherently wrong with sodium. You, you need it. Uh, you know, there needs to be a balance in the body. But in excess, right, that sodium can cause uh, this in increase in water retention. And for a lot of you, it can make the cellulite look worse than it is. And uh, on the same note, you have to watch out for the sodium and the things like, it's common sense, like your canned foods, uh, the soups, the fishes, and focus on fresh, non-processed items uh, as often as possible. I'm always gonna say that, eat real food. Real food's always gonna be the key uh, to everything. You can supplement in certain ways, and, and obviously you can't always make a perfect choice if you're trapped somewhere, but for the most part, if you can get non-processed shit or at least minimally processed stuff, it's gonna be better. It's like. You know, I look at the, the shit we used to eat as a kid, like, uh, again, if your parents knew better, they would do better. But man, we're talking like the 80s and 90s. They're sending me to school with like fucking Lunchables. Like, what the hell, mom and dad? Like, these little crackers, these processed little like meat circles, and like this fake ass cheese. And like, hey, good luck to you. And you're, eat, you're eating that uh, with a Capri Sun uh, and a pack of Dunkaroos. And maybe they threw you some Teddy Grahams. And you're like... Uh, I didn't eat, I didn't eat one, one piece of real food up in this thing. Like, what the hell is going on here? But uh, so that's not an ideal real food lunch, by the way. Uh, so try to get the stuff that's minimally processed if you can. And also, you know, just be conscious of, you know, things like 
uh, sauces uh, like soy sauce and teriyaki sauce. Um, they, they can be high in sodium and oftentimes high in simple carbohydrates, just sugars uh, that they pack in there to make them, you know, taste a, a certain way. Not that you have to avoid them like the plague, but just be real mindful of them as you're eating and, and, and track them accordingly. If you're using MyFitnessPal and you're looking at macros and what your sodium is for the day. And then obviously, you know, the big kicker for a lot of people is uh, alcohol uh, obviously is an issue in, in America and I believe in most parts of the world. And uh, it's, it's alcohol in essence is like this chemical that acts, you know, I guess in essence like insulin, if you will, and causing your body to, uh, to store fat and, and create fat and, uh, and preventing it from, from using it to, for energy. And, uh, you know, for most people, beer is probably not going to help your cause uh, of getting rid of cellulite or, or trying to be as lean as humanly possible. And so I'm not saying you can't drink booze, you know, live your life, be an adult, you know, responsibly, uh, as always. But uh, just limit it and be mindful of it. Or, you know, if, if you want to stay away from it, uh, that's fine. And I think, you know, the amount of fat that you have in your body and your fat cells are probably going to be smaller and happier, you know, the less alcohol you're pumping into your system all day, every day, because obviously, you know, once that's in the system, it, it kind of takes precedence over everything else. And then your body can't really do a whole lot else. It can't really burn fat because booze is kind of taking over and then the system has become saturated. And then all your body is doing just to kind of work uh, to get rid of it, because I guess you classify it as a poison, right? And so uh, it's, it's why if you drink too much, your body will puke it out. So it's protecting you from not dying. We've all been there uh, in college on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, maybe Sunday if you're super irresponsible, but uh, that's how it works. And so I think anybody would tell you who's trying to be optimally lean, uh, that just drinking in moderation and drinking in their specific spots is probably better than having four glasses of wine a night. It's just, it's just really hard to, uh, to be optimal health in, in terms of, you know, I guess how you look uh, by drinking a shit ton of beer and, uh, you know, vodka and wine and, and tequila every single night. So take that for what it is. It's probably not the advice most adults want to hear, but uh, it's the truth. So on top of that, when we're talking uh, the manufactured fats, right? Uh, such as the things found in like your box and, uh, and packaged foods, those are problematic uh, for most people. First, the poor quality of these fats, which can be trans fats or just the excessive kind of, you know, polyunsaturated fats, love to be stored in the body. They can also increase inflammation, uh, which is not ideal chronically over time, which can lead to, again, water retention and help decrease kind of the fat breakdown, which you have going on. So, you know, they're, they're associated with uh, the, the high, simple carbohydrate foods, right? So like, what are you talking about, Jeremy? High in, in carbs and high in these kind of, you know, shittier fats, cakes, uh, the, the, the delicious, amazing baked goods that we all love that we probably buy from the store. Uh, the ones that are like highly addicting and kind of like, you know, we have a hard time getting rid of. That's what I'm talking about here. Your, your brownies, uh, your brookies. What are those like? The, those are like the, the brownies and the cookies together. I, I think we bought them once. They must not have been that great. I don't know. Or maybe we just don't buy them anymore because they were so good. And my wife and I will eat them in two seconds. But I'm like, I like cookies too. And I like brownies. I kind of like them separate. Uh, but I guess if you smash them together, they're not bad. Uh, anyways, the point I'm sharing is those are the, the manufactured fats you should stay away from. And again, a lot of times, like, I think it's still the case where you can put trans fats in products and list it at zero if it's under 0 0.5 grams per serving. But if it's over that, then you have to list that. So I think like sometimes the peanut butters can have the trans fats in them. Somebody messaged me if I'm wrong here, but I believe that's still the case, at least the things I've read and uh, talked about with colleagues is that you can add zero, like 0.4 grams per serving of trans fats in something, but not list it. Uh, I believe that's the case, which is still crazy. So again, just eating real food and being mindful of the things that are overly processed and manufactured is probably your best bet. So. Obviously, you know, the best diet and the best way to eat and live your life to reduce the appearance of cellulite is one that uh, contains high quality, real food, things that run, swim, fly, grow from the earth that, uh, you know, can be minimally processed. You know, I think organic is better if you obviously can afford it. Uh, the, the whole food proteins uh, that are not laced with a bunch of preservatives, overly, you know, packed sodium and sugars. 
So like your organic beef and chicken and uh, you know eggs, uh, your purified whey proteins, your wild caught uh, fish, if you will, and then get a shit ton of uh, colorful vegetables. You know greens. Uh, I don't want to say just greens, I don't just mean that, I mean everything, that works. cauliflower, carrots, uh, zucchinis, all those things are amazing. Fruits uh, are great too, obviously, you know, don't eat 14 pieces of fruit a day, like don't have 22 bananas, but they do have a place, like they're, they're nature's dessert, if you will. So I think if you turn to the lower sugar ones, like your berries are probably the best, but again, the, fruit, the fruits provide fiber. Uh, they have a lot of antioxidants in them. And obviously there's, when you're talking about fruits and vegetables, there's a, a potassium and a balance of sodium in there. And then obviously, you know, the whole food fats, uh, especially the ones that are high in unsaturated fats like avocados and eggs and yolks and uh, the egg yolks, obviously, you know, fish, fish oils, krill oils, olive, olive oil, coconut oil, those are all great things to throw into your diet. So um, I would invest into, uh, the, the shitty diet stuff. I don't have, I got, I need to get these stats in front of me. It's like what we spend on like the diet industry to not be lean. Um, I'm going to pull those up and I'm going to, I'll drop on the next podcast. just like as an intro, just because I think it's important, but don't believe all the hype. I wouldn't go invest money into like all these crazy gadgets and uh, cool sculpting and all this other shit out there. Again, I don't, I don't have all the data in front of me, but I don't believe those things are the answer. Uh, someone please prove me wrong if that's the case, but I, I wouldn't invest my money into like all these procedures and these like invasive things and all these weird ass treatments and gadgets and gasmos because just do like what sounds logical. Do what makes sense. And uh, every day you're gonna get bombarded with like products and you know, creams and potions and pills and procedures and like this new fancy diet that you know proclaims to terminate all cellulite or do you put this the wraps remember do you guys remember wraps like what a bunch of shit wraps were you wrap this thing around your body for this many minutes and you take it off and magically you're leaner like i don't even understand how a rational human being could think that would make any fucking sense i'm not i'm not very smart i've i've studied a lot I've read a lot of things. I've become friends with the really smart people. Uh, I've given my life to this, so I've learned a lot of stuff along the way. But I'm not a genius. Like, I'm not that intelligent. And when I see shit like that, I'm like, that makes no sense. Like, that makes zero sense to me. So it, it, it baffles me how people I talk to who are much smarter than me think things like wraps work to get rid of cellulite. Or like, we're gonna put this cool shit on your skin and that's gonna eradicate cellulite forever. It's like the same, remember that product you remember? It used to be like, you, it, like it looks like sprinkle. It looks like, uh, I don't know, like peppers or something. It was like, you know, like when you go to like Pizza Hut, I'm dating myself, like back in the day, we used to have this thing called Book It. If you read a book at school, uh, you got this little certificate and then you got a little free pan pizza at Pizza Hut. And it was always super jacked. It's like, pizza was expensive, at least like for my family. So we never went to Pizza Hut. By the way, we went to a place called Rocco's. A thousand times better. Shout out to Rocco's Pizza. Best pizza in Minnesota, hands down. It's not even close. But anyways, we would get these little, you'd read a book and uh, you get a book it certificate and then you get a personal pan pizza. And I loved it because it had Ninja Turtles video game at Pizza Hut. And I love Ninja Turtles. I love that video game. In fact, you know what? When the world starts rolling right again, I'm going to buy fucking Ninja Turtles arcade game and I'll put it in my house. Heather, it's coming. So anyways, we will go do that. And uh, I'm almost losing my mind here uh, in terms of what I'm talking about. I just got talking about uh, Pizza Hut and uh, pizzas. But we would go there and you like these little uh, mini pan pizzas and uh, they're not real food. And uh, anyways, I'm losing my mind. Uh, you guys, I'm sorry. Uh, I literally just lost my train of thought that has not happened on this entire podcast uh, before. But uh it's just crazy to me that uh, we fall for all these things that uh, we think are real, but wraps are, are not real. And oh, the point of my, my talk was I go to Pizza Hut, <laughs> give me a little mini pan pizza, and uh, I would grab like these those little pepper flakes, you know, that have like the Parmesan cheese and then those little spicy peppers. And I put them on my pizza and I burned the shit in my mouth. It was way too hot, but I loved how it tasted. Anyways, they made this product a couple years back. It looked like that. And they said if you sprinkle it on your food, it would cut out like 25 to 50% of the calories on your food. And I remember like reading that and I saw the commercial, I go, you're, you're telling me there's a, a thing they make that you can sprinkle on your food and it will take away pizza calories? 
If that was a real thing, it would sell more than the iPhone sold in a fucking week. If that, if, it, take this as a note for life here. I'm, I'm glad I found my train of thought. If you see products like that, like you wrap your body in this, it makes you leaner. Sprinkle this on your food, it takes the calories away. If you see shit like that, that seems like it is better than gold, better than water, better than an iPhone. If you're seeing things like that and you haven't heard it from a million people already, it's not true. Things that are great in the world, we know about them and we know about them rather quickly. We really do. Like, what are some things that we all know as humans that are amazing? Netflix is pretty awesome. I think we're all aware of that. Cinnamon rolls are pretty great. I think we all know how good cinnamon rolls are. Coffee, uh, how addicted are we to coffee? Sex, how, how much do we love sex? These are all basic things we know about. These are not, these are not secrets. They don't got to sell these things on infomercials at 2 o'clock in the morning. You know why? Because they're fucking great and we all know what they are. So when you see all this fancy diet this, fancy products this, this gadget, this gasmo, this is going to, it's all horseshit. The thing that works is you guys just literally eating real food, food that Mother Nature gave you, exercising, moving your body daily, limiting the processed crazy stuff, limiting the alcohol, getting quality sleep, not trying to overstress, you know, and, and hopefully you pick the right parents to be born from. But you can't do that, you know? So you gotta deal with what you got genetically and biologically and just where you're at and what your age is and what you've done over time. And, uh, you know, if it was super easy, everybody would do it, but it's not. And you also just have to love yourself, you know, and that's the takeaway from all this. We can talk about all the specifics and the things you guys can do, but women, you are just way, uh, you're way too hard on yourselves. You really are. And, uh, and more so, it's probably, you know, I don't know if it's too impressive with their women, um, especially like if you're married and you got a husband or like a boyfriend or something like he, you know, God willing, like hopefully like loves you for who you are and, you know, understands like this is just part of like the life process, especially if like, you know, you met each other at 25 and, and now you're 35, obviously, you know, you're going to be older. You're going to look different. Like that's part of it. Like if my wife always thought I was going to have the same beautiful head of hair forever, uh, she's sadly going to be mistaken when she wakes up to Bruce Willis in a, in a it could be a week, could be a couple of years, who knows at, at this rate. But, uh, the point being is that's just who we are. Like, we age, we change, and we evolve. And uh, I, being in the fitness world and uh, doing what I do for a living and looking the way I look, I think people would be, I guess, maybe put back, but like I could really give a shit how lean my wife is. I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't care what her body fat is. It doesn't mean anything to me. I love her for who she is. If she's a good person, if she feels comfortable at a higher body fat, I'm cool with it. If she wants to gain 15 pounds and that puts her in a healthy range and she feels good there, then I'm okay with it. If she wants to lose five pounds because she feels comfortable there, I'm okay with it either. It doesn't change my feelings towards her whatsoever. If she has a self-confidence issue one way or the other, then that's something that we can discuss that's a mental thing, it's not a physical thing. And that's why I share that with you, for all of you guys out there who are listening, it doesn't matter to us. You got to love yourself where you're at. And it's just like over time, it's going to be just who we are. Like we're going to pick up, you know, some bumps and bruises along the way. We're going to lose some things that we once had, but we're going to gain so much more. And getting older is not, uh, you know, it's not something to look at as like a negative. It's, it's a positive. It's a gift that a lot of other people didn't get. So if you're listening to me and you're you know, 42, 51, 63, 27, there's people who are not with us anymore who didn't have the same luxury that you have to age, to go through the aging process, to pick up, you know, maybe a, a bump or a bruise here or a scar or a wrinkle or a dot of cellulite or, you know, an injury and, and live to, to fight through it and go past it. And uh, yeah, our, our body is our business card and it's who we are, but you would be really surprised how little um, those of us who are enlightened really notice, you know, the imperfections in your body. Cause you always see yourself, if you have that mindset, you know, way worse than anybody else does. And I always, I just use my wife as an example cause I live with her and um, she doesn't mind me talking about her on the podcast and even if she does, 
I can deal with it when I get home. But like, you know, she's a smoke show. My wife's a beautiful, she's a unicorn. And uh, at some point she's probably gonna pick up some cellulite along the way and like, does it really matter? Um, at, at some point my body won't look like this. Hopefully I can stretch it out for a long time, but I don't imagine, you know, 67 year old Jeremy uh, looks the same as, you know, 36 year old Jeremy. It'd be cool if I figure it out. I'll sell it to you guys and we'll all look amazing together. But the reality is it's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. It just is like certain things come and certain things go and there's certain things you can do to, you know, mitigate, you know, what's going on. And, uh, it, but it really has to start with you taking care of yourself from an internal standpoint with the food, with the exercise, but more importantly than that, it's the mentality. It's the way that you think about yourself, the way that you look at yourself and the way that you talk to yourself. And I can't stress that enough. You can't always look at yourself as like, I'm not good enough, I'm a failure, I'm too fat, I'm too this, I'm too that. You have to start flipping the conversation in your head, at least internally and being positive about it. It's like, you know what? Here's the things that aren't perfect about me. I can work as hard as I can work to change them in a healthily kind of happy way, but don't be overly critical and, and don't beat yourself up over it because a lot goes into it. And sometimes, you know, it's genetics, man, and it's hormones and it's uh, it makes you who you are. And so uh, I share a lot with personality traits, um, not so much the physical body, you know, that's kind of, if that's, you know, I'm, I'm very good at that. Obviously it's Jeremy's Gut Fitness, I do it for a living. And so, that part of my life, I got under control, right? It's so hard for me, obviously, to stay in shape and, and avoid all the, you know, bear traps of, of food and drink and, and all the temptations out there. But I share that on the same note for the fact of like, sometimes the things, your hormones, the things that are, are causing you to maybe have cellulite are also the same reasons you're such a caring, kind, awesome person and it makes you be able to function and do all the other amazing things you do. And you, you can't take one gift without the other. Like even for myself, some of the things that make me, I guess, you know, empathetic or insightful and, and amazing and determined and like obsessive um, also make me shitty in other areas of life. But it's just who we are, man. And so that's the takeaway. Uh, I shared the tips of what you guys can do, but the biggest one of all of them is just think about yourself different. And uh, don't be your own worst enemy and, and don't be overly critical of yourself and don't be overly dramatic about it and just know as long as you didn't pick a, a shithead husband um <laughs> he uh he loves you for who you are man you know cellulite or not and uh it isn't the end of the world and, and i promise you that and uh, you make it way bigger in your head than it is and oftentimes you know if you're the person who's trying to find it and see it you're always going to see it and find it if you're looking in the the right angle or the right light or turning and twisting a certain way to try to get it to come out i'm sure you probably can but that's not how we live real life and that's not how people see us so take that for it is you guys hopefully you enjoyed and hopefully it helped put some of your minds at ease and gave you the tips that can help you move forward if you have anything specific to ask me hit me up we have people in our nutrition coaching groups all the time who, who have these questions and we try to talk them through it the exact same way with tracking macros and checking up on them there is something to be said about the accountability of that and uh thanks to my homies at athletic greens who brought you this podcast again if you guys are interested in the 20 free travel packs hit me up we'll send you guys a link and you can get on them it's the one thing i take every single day and i do not miss it and i feel like a mother and rock star because of it and I do believe I got 10 travel packs here in house we can ship out to. If you're really on the fence about trying them, I'll go the extra step and ship them right to your front door. You can try one for yourself. And then if you want the 20 free travel packs from there, then you can take the plunge and join with me. So hit me up quickly if you're interested in that. This is May the 30th. So you're gonna have to go quick. So I'm sure I'm gonna get all 10 messages probably by tonight or tomorrow morning at the latest. So if you're on iTunes right now, stop. Don't be a lazy ass, do me a favor. Go to your podcast app on your iPhone, scroll your finger all the way down, five star, leave me a comment. I truly would appreciate it. And you know, if you have a friend or family member or like, you know, if, I don't want to just single out females here, but this is kind of a female episode. Send it to one of your female friends if they want to give this a listen. Hopefully you can help them. Uh, just know that they're badass, whether they have cellulite or not, but if they're trying to really tackle it, this would be, you know, kind of the science behind it. And again, it's all the basic stuff you know. But uh, hopefully it helps kind of, you know, put you at ease and just know you're on the right track if you're eating real food and you are exercising. So I appreciate you guys. Have an amazing Saturday. And until next time, eat well, train hard, be nice to people, and please keep doing shit you love with people you enjoy because your life is too short not to. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.